Um, come with the frog here. Um, today we're in chat. We're going to be doing an R01 for beginners. Going over the basics of what weapons to use. Showcasing different strategies for different bosses at level 1. Thank you very much. I guess you could do this for more health. If you really wanted to. For I guess for beginners, yeah. If you're going to be level 1, you're a beginner. You want to go with the medallion. Because that way you, uh... At least have a little bit more health to work with at level 1. I don't even know how much health this like medallion gives you, but it's not going to be super much. I guess we can grab the Uchi at some point. Because we'll have the Gajic's Great Rune to use it. I mean, first things first, we're going to do is uh, grab Radigan's Sword Seal. If you're going to try and do RL1, you want to obviously min max and get as much power as possible. <coughs> Grab the Kukri's here for later. Leaf. It will summon torrent to treat him with Well we don't have to go for the balls though, we're going for Starfist, which is different. First thing we're gonna do, by the way, is we're gonna grab uh, the Stone Sword key, because we could use that for later. And then we're gonna grab the strength tier here. Yeah, true dope. Me neither. So here's the strength tier. We can use that a lot. Especially for other like specific weapons that we need a two hand. Strength tier just helps out. Then we're going to go ahead and kill uh, this knight up here because it gives us a uh, golden bow, Ash of War. Get off your horse, please. You're being pulled over. <laughs> okay. I almost fell off the hill. There we go. Golden Vow. Our Ash of War. And let's go get our Katana. Which is in this catacomb right next to, next to the Golden Vow. Nice and easy. People Pog! It is an Uchi Katana. Boop. We could grab the Talisman, I guess. If we really wanted to, but we don't really need it. Gonna knock this guy out of his hole. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I have these. I just give and I'll pop. Don't dally. Give it your all, I. Go ahead and smack his bottom until he comes out. Ah, oh, that. <laughs> well, I. And then we mollywop his ass. I... Boom. I see it. Boom. Humans Boom. Boom. We got we got a. Pop Alexander for the Jar Shard. We could do it now, actually. Another talisman that we could really use here is going to be this one. Keep in mind that this RL1 playthrough is going to be maxing damage, not necessarily maxing defenses. Or in any way playing uh, in a defensive manner. So we're going to drop down to the Spirit Spring and get this next uh, talisman as well. We're getting Blue Dancer Charm, baby. This fight's also really, really easy, too. Which is really nice. And drop down, drop down. A little bit of hop there, and then go over here. So using some armor. That's okay, we, we won't be using armor for this run. We'll go ahead and just run up to the Guardian Golem. Gonna charge it to his leg. I think twice. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Smack his Give me the overhead, please. Thank you. There we go. And oh, and blue dancer charm. Oh. oh. I don't know how I'm still aggroed, but we'll just take the port. All right, I'm going to go back up here. So now we have Golden Vow, Jar Shard, Blue Dancer, Uchi Katana. So we got some stuff already in our pocket. You hear a cousin? Um, we are getting... Yeah, we'll do that too, actually. Uh, we do need Sleep Pot, Pot Recipe, though, for later. We're definitely using that just to make it easier. Shackle helps a lot with Market Level 1. 
I guess for beginners, yeah. I guess for beginners, they want to use Shackle. Even though Shackle's, like, overpowered. It's very kind of you. Yeah, it is vanilla, I know, right? Definitely feels very odd. Do we need, do we need these flowers? Damn, I thought I could go through the... Oh, I can go through the window. i grab a bunch of these flowers real quick. Try not to die. We'll need those for the sleep pots. And our other talisman, which is the axe talisman. Which is going to be useful for the rest of the game. Ow. Alright, we're going to buy some stones from this guy. I'm going to buy the rest of these. So we have nine. We need twelve. Also, a parry shield. We could use that for later. Um, and I will sell this to buy the arrows. Here we can grab uh, Dectus while we're already here. Ah, okay, Jesus Christ. I don't think I've ever had them lob bombs that accurately before. What's your favorite condiment for chips? I don't know, my mom used to do this thing where she would mix mayonnaise and ketchup together, and that was actually pretty damn banging. If you can't port, by the way, just, uh, jump off. Alright. Grab some tools here. We can go this way, and grab the Rockview Balcony. Grace. Grab the Strength Talisman that's in Red Main, or Fort... Fort something. Fort Gale. Uh, I guess we can get the dragon here to open up this statue for some stones. While we're here. I mean, might as well, right? Oi, big man. I need you to break the statue for me, please. Right over here. Very nice. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Is he stuck on the tree? Bro. He's stuck on the tree. Oh, come on, bro. Hit the... God dang it. You're so close. Oh, thank you. You got it. Cool. Cool. You felt dirty using the shackle on Morgoth? I don't think you should. There's nothing, nothing wrong with using a shackle. To be honest. So this way here is really easy to get through the fort, by the way. That's where we get our first, like, actually really good talisman, which is Radigan's Sword Seal. Alright, so we're gonna hit this wall right here. Because there's bats inside that will hear that and then go towards the wall. All you gotta do is gotta crouch here, hug this side. So that bat doesn't notice you. And you crouch this way. And you see how the both are looking at the wall. And then you run up to the ladder. Ta-da. Now we have the second half, the Dectus. We're going to drop down here real quick. I've had quite a few people come in here and ask like what challenge they should be doing. And doing an RL1, you know. Uh, I think like a guide, I guess, would be kind of cool, I guess. So I could reference it to people. And be like, hey, this is like a good RL1 kind of guide if you want to do it on your own. Okay, so now we have Radigan Sorcerer, which is one of the best talismans for this challenge run. Because we get five st uh, five levels in both uh, health, endurance, strength, and dex. Which allows us to use our Uchi Katana. Let's go! Now we have a parry shield as well, and if you have a hard time parrying, there is actually, I do have a market parry guide on my YouTube channel as well. You could go and like collect more if you really wanted to, if you want to be really OP. Would you say parrying is an important factor to the market fight? Uh, it makes it way easier, that's for sure. I'll use the stamina and the charge, that's fine. And we're going to be taking a lot of damage anyways, so, like, having a lot of healing isn't really worth it. We just got to play smart, and I'd rather have more blue flasks for unsheaths than anything else. Run in. Unsheath. R1. 
Parry. One, two. Parry again. Go. Who is it? <laughs> on sheep. R1, R1, R1. Thou art of passing skill. On sheep. Warrior blood must truly run in thy veins. Tarnished. And on sheep. On sheep. There we go. There we go. Our second talisman pouch, and we can put uh, jar shard on. Oh, we forgot to use golden vow, by the way. Oops, we missed some damage, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the ash of war section and put golden vow on the club. Um, we could upgrade the Uchikatana if we really wanted to, but I don't want to waste my time doing that. And people always ask, by the way, why do I block while running? Because it it resets the jumping animation. You see how like my character slows down after that second jump? When you when you block, that doesn't happen. So when you run like this, the first jump is like really far, and then like you can see like a, like a, like a slug in midair. But if you hold it down, you constantly do the same jump instead. That allows you to get through areas way easier. Tiger is on me. We're gonna sneak past these fellas real quick. A1 sauce guards right there. At the top of the staircase, jump. So the ballistas miss. Go through here, go through here, grab the kukris, thank you very much. We can go this way because this is safer, so like why not? We also grab that one grace prior just to make it easier for when we go for gotcha great rune. A couple more kukris, that's gonna be useful. We can grab this just because. So we're gonna drink the physic. We're going to then go to the club, go to Golden Bow, swap back over to the Uchi Katana. When he does this, you can just run past him and then unsheath. Unsheath. And pretty much just make sure to unsheath. When he does this, you have time to drink a mana flask. And unsheath. Unsheath. On sheath. That move is always really weird. He's gonna phase transition, get some R1s in for the bleed, and then drink a blue flask. We could rebuff the golden bow here too, but you don't necessarily have to. Run towards him and unsheath. Go for a post. And unsheath. If you aim this correctly, you can run jump instead. I am the Lord there we go. Godric. Of all that is. So now that we have our first great rune of remembrance, we can go ahead and activate Godric's great rune, which is the best great rune in the game, by going back to this grace that we grabbed. That's useless. Don't pick that up. <laughs> Just habit. Dude, something's shiny. You want to pick it up, dude. I always like to go on the left side here, by the way, for the Giants. Um, because you can just run at him when he does that attack. Um, and then once this Archer Golem stands up, just stand behind the pillar. As he shoots, you can just run. 
By the time he aims at you, he's going to miss anyways. I'll turn my camera, you'll see it. He's going to be aiming at the pillar to the left of me. He's not actually going to hit me. And there we go. Rune Arc is activated. Let's go ahead and buy ourselves a Rune Arc. Um, Puck. We could do all remembrances. I guess. I don't know. Alright, so we have that rune, great rune activated. And boom. There we go. We can do the simplest for now. That's fair. Okay, we can do simplest for now. So I guess that means uh, Radon or Renala then for, for RL1. I would say Radon because you don't have to do Red Wolf then. All right? Oh, we're going to talk actually to Gostok because we want to get the... We want to get the Buckler, which is the best shield in the game. We do want to buy that from him. We're going to go ahead and grab this. Uh, now, I haven't upgraded the Uchi Katana a single time, by the way. It's still plus zero. Um, and... Depending on if you feel like you sh should upgrade or not, you can. You can always buy. You can always buy more stones. That's fine. Uh, it's not required. Like you can kill Radala with a plus zero Uchi. But we're gonna buy the rest of our stones here for Smithing One. So we need three for twelve, and then we're gonna buy three of the twos. That's it. Um, so now for smithing stones. Yeah, we could just do this. We're gonna grab some smithing twos. So we're gonna go to all these all these gazebos, we're gonna have smithing twos and smithing threes. Then we're gonna grab the academy key here from Smarag. You don't have to kill the dragon. You can just go and ride up this pillar here. Slide down, grab the items, and then go up this pillar right here. And keep on going. All right. So we're going to go ahead and we got the academy key now so we can go inside. The dagger talisman's really good though. Yeah, I agree. You can grab this grace if you really need to, but you shouldn't have to. Go ahead and run through here, taking your time. Teach them the gamer jump, the rope jump. There you go. I don't even know how you explain it. Just run up the rope and then jump on it. All right, so Red Wolf time. Go ahead and just drink your flask. You're going to buff with Golden Vow. I'm going to go ahead and grab your Uchi Katana. Your Uchi Gucci Goo. And he's going to make sure and just get on sheaths off whenever you can. Sheet. Roll. Sheet. Should have rolled there, but I fucked it. Get a stagger, just stand in front of it, and boom. There we go. We're gonna go into this room here, by the way, with this mage guy. Grab this wet blade. That way we can now put frost on our weapon. You wanna roll past uh, Moongrim here, turn your camera around, and while you activate the button, just unsheath on him. And he's not gonna make it up to the elevator. 
And he falls. Bye bye. In this fight, we're not going to unsheath, by the way, uh, because we want blood procs instead. One, two, three. If you don't know where this, if you don't know what this dude to hit next, it's the one that sings. So it should be a two cycle, which is completely fine. That's one. That is two. And that is three. We can go ahead, we're going to Golden Bow for uh, phase two. So on phase two, you're gonna start running away or running towards her because her charge second hit got jump bar two. You get a free jump bar two off on she. You want to run at her whenever she casts. Now you get a you get a free stagger pretty much. On sheath. R1. Roll that so you don't get knocked aside. We're gonna go ahead and have Bloodhound do an attack here. I'm gonna jump R2 her. Keep running at her because her spells are gonna miss. That was awkward. Okay. So, okay, so the Bloodhound Knight should have died. I uh, should have vanished because he already did an attack, but for some reason he didn't. Now we have to do this without a Great Rune activation, though, so our damage is gonna be a little bit less. Get a bleed proc here. No. Nope. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, that's without summons, but I mean. My dear daughter, weave thy night. I don't know. Into being. You'll figure it out. This was all with a plus zero Uchi still, by the way. So keep that in mind as well. That was all plus zero Uchi damage um, with Blue Dancer and Radigan. So don't think that you need to like go out and grind a bunch to even get to, like all this damage or whatever. We can activate that Great Rune, I guess, or Runark. Might as well. Alrighty, and we're in Altus. We can go ahead and grab the Smithing Bell Bearing. Which is really easy to grab. So you can just run past these guys. They're not going to do anything anyways. Uh, excuse me? Can I... What the f... That was so rude. Also, if you guys are wondering why the Uchi is plus zero, is I'm just saving my resources. So I don't have to, like, run around as much for, like, smithing stones. There we go. Bell bearing. Does this guy have smithing stones? I don't remember. Is a customer. Well. We'll buy two of these just in case. Should we will buy a long bow, right? There we go. Get the finger seal as well. One stone, why not? So to my understanding, <laughs> to my understanding on how this works, we're gonna pull aggro by standing in his line of vision. So you see how like his body's turning towards us? Is like where he sees us. You see him walking towards us. He's not aggroed, but he sees us. So we're just gonna keep 
having him slowly follow us pretty much. Okay, well that's not... Okay, so, uh, welcome back to the guide, guys. Um, come on, horsey, man. Okay, so now I believe... Don't do that. What the? That's not what I aimed at, dickhead. I, I don't understand. Am I not supposed to... For God's sakes. Come back. Thank you. There we go. Aim at this rock. Now aim at this rock. Now aim at this rock right here. That's, I said aim at this rock. What the fuck are you aiming at? That rock! You're welcome! I even got blood on my forehead. I'm slamming my head against the desk. All right, but we're going to keep moving forward. Keep moving forward, guys. And we are in the capital. And now we get to do a cool thing called capital skip, which any beginner can do. All you got to do is follow this guide very, very strictly. All right? You don't have to kill B uh, Monsieur Bubble if you don't want to. All right? All you got to do, stand next to Bubble. Okay. Hi, Bubble. You're going to slowly but surely nudge your way over to the ledge here, okay? And as soon as you drop down, stop moving. Okay, don't do that. For fuck's sake. All right. So keep nudging and just, like, move your way forward slowly, okay? Like that. Perfect. All right? All right. Now we're going to face the wall. Now you're going to flick your character 180, all right? So just, like, press down very slightly. Like that. Turn your camera. And then we're going to go ahead and scope with the bow. And look at that tower right there. You see that tower right there? You want to look at that tower or that little, little chimney top right there. And we're going to press back hop, which is the dodge button. Press that once. And then you're going to turn to the right. There you go. Now you're on this ledge. Peepo Pog. Now you're going to run and then jump to the left. Now we can get a, another bow, which is pretty cool. Which is the black bow. This is going to be pretty useful for... Okay. This is going to be pretty useful for when we face Godskin Duo later. Okay, and we're going to be up here. Pog. Now, we're just going to go ahead and run here. Go ahead and crouch here, by the way, so you uh, don't make any noise for this knight because he gets angry. Once you're on top of the staircase, you can go ahead and start running again. We're almost at the, at the star fists, guys. And then the rest of the run is uh, a busy gig. We go past this duelist. Go around the whole Coliseum, dude. And here we are. The Starfists. Now we can pretty much win the whole game. These are the strongest weapons in the game. Now we're going to go ahead and offer the bell bearing that we got so we can buy some threes and some fours. We need nine threes and 12 fours. Oh, that is more than 12. There we go. Hello, sleeping lobsters. These are twos, right? Are these threes? Thank God. Alrighty. 
drop down here, grab that. There we go. Go ahead and hop off your horse here. Don't let that man hurt you. We're gonna go up here. We could grab the strength talisman. Just because, I guess. There we go, strength talisman, in case we ever need that. Not necessary, but it's there. Take the teleporter because uh, Cragblade is right next to this, so makes it nice and easy. I'm gonna grab this grace for Radon in case. I don't know if, if we even do. We don't even have to do Radon. We're gonna go up this here, tents, jump across, and it's gonna be a beetle. We're gonna hug the right side here of this hill. The beetle's gonna be right there. Doesn't make any noise. Charge R2. Charge R2. There we go. Crag blade. There we go. We upgraded 13 times. Very pog. We have a lot of money that we can't use, so just hold on to it. Um, we're going to go ahead and Ash of War the Star Fists with Crag blade. Which, in this case, we could put cold on them for frost buildup. Which I'm not against. So now we have increased poise buildup, but we also do deal blood and frost buildup on top of that. Helps a lot. We have Flame Grammy Strength as another buff. Go ahead and do that. So we have our Golden Vow, we have our Flame Grammy Strength, we have our Star Fists, which are the strongest weapons. And let's go ahead and kill some shit now. If you want to make sure that you can buff without having these things aggro you, by the way, just quit out at the door. That's fine. So first we're going to drink our Physic because it lasts the longest. Then we're going to go ahead and use our Golden Vow into our Flame Grammy Strength. He's going to do a ranged attack most of the time. This, this time he didn't do it. We got the nice little double jump attack there. There we go. Alright, so now we actually equip Axe Talisman, which is going to make our weapon even more powerful. Also, you have this uh, assassin up here, by the way, that's kind of like guarding the door. Just go ahead and um, crouch here, hug the right side, and just shove your head next to her butt. There you go. She never notices. Drink your physic real quick. There we go. Our all one, by the way. If we can go ahead, we can do the good old capital skip again. Oh yeah, I should be getting my fourth talisman pouch, actually. That's kind of my own... I could have had four talisman pouches at this point. Oops. I missed out on some damage there. That's my fault. Sorry, guys. Go away, please. Thank you. The thing is, like, I'm trying to avoid, like, doing too much, like, prepping. Because I've seen people, like, complain about these types of videos where they're like, Hey, like... You have me do all this extra work just to one-shot a boss, but I don't actually, like, learn the boss, you know? It's 
I'm gonna grab our uh, bell bearing here, by the way, for the five and six stones, so we can upgrade uh, five more times. That's gonna be very useful for Fire Giant and for Godskin. Everyone's got their bell bearing. Epo Pog. Uh, was it? I need ten. There we go. Buy the talisman pouch. Thanks. There we go. That is our full build now. Just lay out. Seems very basic and straightforward. Is Ritual Sword better than Blue Dancer? I want to say no, because like I mentioned before, with Ritual Sword, as soon as you get hit, that buff is gone. With Blue Dancer, it doesn't matter how much damage I take, I keep my damage bonus, you know? One thing to note, though, if this is for beginners, it's not realistic that they'll be able to use great, uh, Godric's Great Rune. They'll be out of rune arcs in like 30 minutes from all the dying. I mean, I could turn it off. That's fine. However, for the build that like I'm running right now, it doesn't make a difference. Like You can still use everything that I'm using, even without the Godric's Great Rune, you know? All righty, fire giant time, chat. The double. I'm gonna focus this ankle pretty much. His foot pushed me into the... Okay, dude. And we're gonna go... Ahead. Well, you wanted the jump attack. That's the best one. This one right here. And charge R2. His ankle twice. Charged R2. Charged R2. Charged R2. Phase two. Phase two, we just want to go ahead and hug his hands. That's all we want to do. Just gonna come down here and go ahead and just charge right to his hands. We go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and charge right to his head. Now some people say to charge uh, to repose the eye, but the eye repose doesn't do any damage. To When he does this attack, just go ahead and get close to the fireballs and then activate them and then jump away. And he's stuck. If you have Kukri still equipped, you can use Kukri's to keep the boys damage up. Roll this one, and go ahead and charge R2. That almost hit me. You want to stay as close to him as possible as I am, so he does the fist attacks more than anything else. If you stay really close to him like that, he mostly does his hand attacks more than fire attacks. Uh, phase two, it doesn't matter which hands you hit; you uh, they both have like the the wound area, so both of them are, are are weak on the wrists. However, in phase one, you want to go for the one that has the, the the leg that has the bandage. In phase one, okay, hold on, let me go ahead and just get the pots from Kali real quick. Very kind of you, sir. 
So man, we went ahead and bought some crack pots because we can make sleep pots for a godskin duo. Just makes the fight way easier. It's very tedious otherwise. It's very tedious without sleeping pots. We have sleeping arrows just in case, but uh, we use sleeping pots first as our, uh, you know, as our first option. Uh, should be able to, there we go. So now I have four of these, I believe. We can also go uh, go ahead and unequip our horse. We don't need it anymore. We don't ride our horse anymore for the rest of the game. Grab that smithing eight. Let's go ahead and run through here. No, these these things aren't really doing. Shouldn't have said anything. We got some more smithing eights here, I believe. Just a couple. You can run past Lance Axe. She's not going to do anything. Uh, grab this if you feel like you need to. Run over here. This guy is going to possibly just lunge at you. Just go ahead and roll it. It's not that bad, to be honest. And just, like, jump down here. And once you're done here, grab this. This is a bell bearing, but this is the somber one. We get the actual normal one from Godskin Duo, which we'll need to upgrade our weapon to plus 24. I'm going to go ahead and jump over on this side. Uh, so Godskin Duo, by the way. We're going to grab this grace down here just to make it easier. Drink the physic. Golden bow. Actually, no, don't do this. Just drink the physic. Just drink the physic for now. We're going to aggro. We're going to aggro for now. And then once you have both in a pocket, we're going to kind of aim at the ground because God's going to apostle will otherwise uh, dodge it. Once both are sleeping, then we go for buffs. And charge dart two, charge dart two, and charge dart two for the stack. Reposts. And I go ahead and hit the body to make sure he gets some bonus damage off. Same with this one. Charge dart two, charge dart two. Charge dart two again. And he's in a really shitty position, so I don't get the... Didn't get the, uh, didn't get the initial, um, repose like I wanted to, but that's fine. Once he does that attack, you can throw a sleeping pot and he won't move. Uh, he should have slept there. There we go. We can go ahead and we can rebuff now. Our blue and charge dart two. Charge dart two. Wait for stamina. Charge dart two again. Posts. And there we go. That is your Godskin duo fight. Let's go ahead and upgrade our Starfists and go for Malekith. I already upgraded one, so I need 10, I think. I need eight. Okay. There we go. Plus 24. Now for this, we're just going to wait a second. There's going to be a Bofa dude that's right there. Uh, we're just going to wait for him to rotate out. There we go. We're going to run past this dog and just jump off where this white thing is. The white drop is. Uh, Golden Vow Ashavor is not 11 seconds. Golden Vow Ashavor is 45 seconds. The incant is 90 seconds. Oh, do you mean? Oh, you mean it's, it's no, it's not 11 seconds, but it's the stat increases 11%. That's what you mean. All right. So it's gonna, not going to do bird skip. That's fine. We can just go ahead and run through. That bird's going to be really annoying, but that's fine. Just charge our two that bird so it doesn't annoy you. Jump across. Okay. Now when it comes to this guy right here, this is really simple actually. All you got to do is just grab out a bow. All right. All right, go ahead and we're going to shoot him once with Mighty Shot. 
There we go. Hit him with four damage. That's fine. As soon as you hit him, he flies away. There we go. Now we don't have the lightning to deal with anymore, so now we can just go ahead and get through this whole place. Now this guy at the staircase is going to do two attacks. Either he's going to lunge at you, or he's doing this one right away. There's one where he like just slices, and that's, and then he's the one where he charges up a little bit. Now, however, if you are like, bro, Dom, I don't know, I had a hard time with the dragon. I don't have a bow. I don't have uh, the patience. I keep getting snagged by birds. Uh, okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead and do roof skip. Or in this case, bird skip. Uh, that way you don't have to deal with anything. Uh, you can just go ahead and just run straight to the bridge that we were just at. We're going to go ahead and we're going to jump on this little thing right here. Jump on the balcony. Slide off. Land on here. Alright. We're going to open this just because we can. Oh, this is where we get the Drake armor. Oh. We're going to go over here and activate this elevator. There's going to be a Bofa guy up here. Now you don't have to fight him. You can, but you don't have to. What I would do is I would just lure him away from that balcony. And all you got... Okay, he's just in the way. Just jump over. Okay, and you're going to have to like walk towards the wall here. You're going to have to rewatch this probably multiple times, but... Once you're up here, you want to start sprinting. Don't do that. So walk towards the wall. So you're on this wall, right? You're going to walk kind of against it. But walking, walking forward at the same time. And then... And then you, want, you, don't, you don't want to do that either. That's jumping too soon, chat. You don't want to do that either. You want to wait till a character is being shifted out. Those are two wrong ways. Here's the right way. There you go. You're going to climb this ladder, and then there's going to be a staircase. And then after the staircase, you're at the same bridge. Ta-da! Alright, so Clergyman is actually pretty easy for the most part. You want to go ahead and just be close to him? And when he does, like, the... Hold on. He's going to do dagger strikes. Dodge, dodge. He's going to do that overhead. You can always get a charge dart two off. Okay. Get close to him again. He's going to do dagger strikes. He's going to do this instead because he's weird. To get a stagger, just go to the front. Okay. What's up, dog? I rolled. Fuck. There we go. Now it's Gideon time. It's a sad state of affairs. I commend your spirit, but alas. No, I shall take the throne. Queen Mary has high hopes for us. Continue. On to it. Oh, you are such a... God, I...
Anyways, welcome back to the guide, guys. Welcome back to the guide. Yeah, first try. First try, guys. That's how you're supposed to approach it. Now, let's go ahead and do the Horalu fight. Oh, I forgot to... Oops. I forgot to buff my... Uh, I forgot to buff my weapons. Uh, whatever, I guess. I don't know. Thanks for throwing for the doubters. Believe us, they're right. <laughs> and yeah, now I can actually use my buffs. So that's kind of cool. Right, there you go. Okay, and and the last part, which is Radigan, uh, Elden Beast. Let's go ahead and, and take care of that real quick. Yeah, Dopey, thanks for the 100 biddies, bro. Dopey, I, are you doing that on purpose?
we go. There we go. RL1, any percent Elden Ring, baby. That was two hours and 39 minutes for RL1, any percent. Not bad, not bad.